Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be taking you through Flower's Update Rows in Excel action. So this action allows you to update your data in your Excel files, whether that data is in a table format or whether it's not in a table format. You can use this action to update both types of files. So let's go ahead and have a look at the solution. So the scenario for our solution is that there is this SharePoint sales list, which we can see on the screen in front of us. As a salesperson completes a sale, they have to come to this list and add a new entry containing the information regarding their last sale. So we need a way to get this data into the sales Excel sheet. So we have a flow which is going to run monthly, which is going to take all the data from the sales SharePoint list and update the data in a sales Excel file. So for this demo, we're mainly going to be looking at this products column just to keep it simple and just to show you how actually you can start to input data and use data in the Flower Update Excel action. However, in reality, you would most likely be wanting to use all of this data. So we're just keeping it simple, but in reality, you would probably want to be updating more than one column. So let's take a look at the sales Excel that we need to update the data into. So this is what the Excel looks like. We can see over here, we've got our data, which is not in table format. So as with all of the flower actions, your data doesn't need to be in a data table. Like we can see here, you can just have it as unstructured data in Excel. But if your data is in a table, this action will work the same way. So it doesn't matter. So we've got our data here in this corner. We also have this chart here, which is using the data from our unstructured table over in the corner there. So as the table updates, the chart will update too. So let's take a look at the flow. So this is my flow. As with a lot of the demos we do, I've got a manual trigger here. However, in reality, because we're wanting this flow to run every month, this would be a scheduled monthly trigger. So the first thing I need to do in my flow is I need to get my data from SharePoint into the flow. So to do this, I'm using the SharePoint get items action and I'm just pointing it to my sales list. Once we've got all of the data, we then need to do a little bit of data manipulation so that we can update the Excel according. So because my only column in my Excel table is products, I need to know how many products have been sold and I need to update this number. So as any new products get added for the next month, this means the amount of entries in the list for that product is going to increase. This means that the length, if we filtered the SharePoint outputs for each product, that means the length of each of those filters will be how many of those products have been sold. And that is going to increase if more sales have happened in the past month, which means that we're going to have a bigger number, which we need to update the Excel with. So to do this in Power Automate, we can use the filter array action. So you can see here, I've only got three products. So I'm going to filter my outputs of my SharePoint get items by each of the different product values. So I've got it for flower, trigger, and verter. And we can then use the lengths of each of these different filters to work out how many products have been sold and get the new number. So because I'm only using three products, this is a viable solution and it's quite easy to hard code into the flow. However, in reality, you're probably gonna have a lot more than three products. So if you had to do this for each one, it would be quite a long flow and probably not the most efficient. So you would need to look at doing this dynamically, which is possible. You would just need to add some more steps here rather than going straight into the filter. But for today, because we've only got three products, we can just go in and add three different filter steps. Next, we need to go through and get our file content of our sales Excel. So I'm using OneDrive as my data source today. So I can easily just go through and use the get file content action. So now that we've filtered our arrays, we need to actually get our data in a format that we can use for the update rows in Excel action. 
So the update rows in Excel action needs its data to be in a JSON format. So because I'm only updating one column, it's quite simple and I've already got the data ready to use. I don't need to be looping through and adding data dynamically. I'm just going to use a compose action here to compose my JSON data array. However, in a real scenario, you're probably going to be inputting more than one column and updating more than one column in your Excel sheets. So you more than likely be using a loop and appending to an array variable, which you would have initialized at the start of the flow. But because my data is quite simple, I'm just going to go ahead and compose like this. Now, the way that the, the Excel action works is it will read the data firstly, column by column, and then row by row. So this means if you are using more than one column, so say I was also inputting revenue, I would my end result would look like this, say I would call this. And this would mean if we obviously had rev for each entry, it means that as this reads this, row one, column one will be this number here. Row one, column two will be this value here. And this would be row two, column one. And the rev down here would be row two, column two. And that was that is how your data is going to be read. That's how you can start to build up your inputs to have more than one piece of data. So once you've got your input array ready, you then need to use the pass JSON action just to make sure that it is in that JSON format. Otherwise, you may get an error when you use it in your update rows and Excel action. So to do this, you just need to use your outputs, whether it's from a compose or whether it is your array variable. You just need to put that in the content and then you need to generate your schema. So because today my schema is just this, I can just copy and paste this into this JSON payload here and it will generate my schema for me. If you're using an array, you may need to do a compose step and compose your whole array and then put in a terminate, run the flow, copy and paste the outputs and use that and copy and paste that into the schema instead. Once we've got the outputs from our past JSON, we can then use our flower action. So the file content is going to be the file content that we got a few steps above. So mine is my output from my OneDrive action. My row data is the outputs from the past JSON. So it's switched over to the dynamic content field now. But I know when I built this out, the outputs wasn't available. So I had to use an expression. So just to make it clear, it has to be the outputs from the past JSON. It can't be the body or anything else it might be showing you. And if it doesn't pop up in the dynamic field options, you can write the expression for this using outputs and then whatever your past JSON action is called. Now, because I'm using unstructured data, it's really important for me to tell the action where to update my data from. So I need to tell it to update from row two and from column two. And you can also tell it where to input the data from if you are using a structured table format too. It's also really important to make sure that you convert numeric and date values. If you are using charts or if any of your columns in your Excel sheet or columns in your Excel table have number or currency formatting, because if this is set to no, it's going to input all of the information in as a string. It's not going to convert your numbers and dates to number and date format. So this applies for dates as well. If you've got date formatting in there. You'll put them in as strings and you will lose any formatting. And if you've got charts, your charts won't show any data because it's not numerical anymore. So it's just important to have this set as yes. So once we've run the flower action, the last step is to update our sales file. So because we are just updating the data, I'm going to update the file. If you wanted to create a new file using the file content, so to have a new file with the updated data rather than overriding the old one, you could do this as well. But for today, I just want to update the original file. So I'm going to use this and the file content is going to be the output from the flower action. So before I run the flow, let's just quickly look at the monthly sales Excel. So this is what it looks like before the flow has run. We can see we've got one Verta product, two flower products and zero trigger products. So I'm just going to close this now and I'm going to go and run the flow.
So we can see that the flow has run successfully. So let's go and open up our updated file. And we can see the file has updated, especially because we can now see that we have a trigger product when before we didn't have any. We can see that Verta and Flora have gone up and we can see now that we have a trigger entry into our chart. So as the data has been updated in our unstructured data table, it is automatically updating the values and figures used in the chart too. So hopefully this video has shown you how you can start to use Flowers, Update Rows and Excel Action. And it's shown you how you can start to update your rows, whether they are in a table format or in an un unstructured format in your Excel files. So I appreciate the example I went through today was quite simple. We were only updating one column in our Excel. However, you can update multiple columns as long as you've got the data there to in input it. And to do this, you would just need to add some more entries and build up your JSON data array. And you'd have to add a few extra data preparation steps to get it ready to input and update the file. If you have any questions about anything you've seen today, please leave me a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodian. And as always, happy automating.